Hey guys, one of the skills you're definitely going to need to develop is being able to change positions using bar chords. And we're not on about keeping bar chords all in the same shape, either an E shape or an A shape. What we're looking at doing is mixing this up. But we want to make sure that you have a useful framework for changing your bar chords on. And in this lesson, we're going to do this based around the minor pentatonic scale. You might not realise that each note of our minor pentatonic scale is actually a root note for a chord as well. Not only can we use these guys for bar chords, but we can also use them for other voicings of chords, shell chords and those jazzy expensive sounding chords as well. But for the purposes of this lesson, we're going to look just at bar chords and how we would switch between these bar chords around this framework of using this minor pentatonic. We're going to start on this A note here. Because this is the tonic for the key, if we're thinking in the key of A minor, then I know from the 7-7 seven, seven grid that this is where chords 1, 4 and 5 live in the minor grid. Let's just apply those notes in the scales. You can see that's actually the first, the third and the fourth note. The intervals however are different. That is the first, that's the flat third, that is the perfect fourth and that is the perfect fifth. So we've got the one, four, and five there. Now those three guys, they are all minor shapes. If I start on this one here, like I said before, with the tonic on the A, on the E string here, this is gonna be an E shape, but it's gonna be an E minor shape. And the easiest way to build your bar chord is to put the E minor shape on first and put the bar on last. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use this system that I call Scout Shape Bar. This is how we get from one chord to the next. So here is that A minor and you can see what I did is I scouted with the shape and then a bar. Some chords you have to scout with the shape. Some chords you actually put a scout on first and then you build the shape around the scout. Which is what happens when I move to chord 4. Now chord 4 is an A minor shape. I scout with my middle finger here on the B string and then I build an A minor shape there and then a bar across that fifth fret and to catch this root note here and that would give me a D minor. Now I know that this shape is exactly the same going up so what I can do is I can use this scout that I put on as a guide to help me to move up a whole step. If I take the pressure off the bar and take the third and fourth fingers off and slide up with that middle finger then what I can do is I can reapply the chord a whole step higher. You can do it keeping all fingers on but if you want to make sure that you know what you're doing then you can see exactly what's going on there. By having this sliding scout we can move it systematically and slowly and really observe what's going on there and that gives me my E minor so let's put those three together we get the A minor then I'm going to scout with my middle finger build the shape build the bar and then using that sliding scout I'm going to move up to chord five there so I've got my three minor chords that I need to build around this minor pentatonic framework. So that is the tonic. Now ordinarily in the key we would have the chord one in minor, chord two in the minor which would be a diminished chord and chord three which is actually a flat three major chord. And because it's a major chord we're just going to apply an E shape here. So now I know where that chord needs to go I can put my scout on, put my shape on, put my bar on. So if I were moving from an A minor here for instance to the flat third here I would slide that shape up there and the way I see it it's almost like a train running along the tracks. A train wouldn't jump off the tracks to go to the next station. What we do is we stay on the tracks which is the strings and the grooves that we have in our fingertips those are the wheels of the train. So A minor I'm using hand to eye coordination here with fingers three and four. I'm looking ahead to where they need to go. Now you can see what happens is sometimes it's this sliding scout moves up first I complete the rest of the shape and I put the bar on so moving between those two so that's four chords that we've done so far so we've got A minor we've got a C major and then when I want to go down here to the D minor I scouted shape bar and then to move up a whole step we get into the E minor a minor, C, D minor, E minor. We've got one chord left now, and if we think about it, if we were to play our pentatonic scale, we went. 
this note here would be on the D string. And because it's on the D string, it's going to be a D shape. And we should really just get this shape here. But what can happen with this is it can sound rather thin. If you listen to the bulk of the chord here, you can hear that it's quite thin, whereas there's a lot of A minor in that strum. So what we can do is we can take this shape, which is the D shape, and move one shape lower in the cage system, which would be an E shape, which would mean we play a G major. If we take this note here, so we can play a G major here. So let's look at the chords that we have with the root on the E string now. We've got a G, we've got an A minor, we've got a C. Let's look at the chords on the A string. We've got a D minor and and an E minor, and then back to A minor, which is home. And that gives you a useful framework to be able to move around that minor pentatonic based idea there. You can write lots of songs with this, and it's a good idea to practice changing from, say, something like this D minor. If I change from here, you can see that the hand shape is very much the same. When I take my hand off, I keep the shape as much as I possibly can. But as I get to where I need to go, I put my scout on first, put the shape on, and then apply the bar. And I would do what I call a two chord loop here. And I would just sit and practice changing between those two chords. And I'm scouting shape bar, scout shape bar, scout shape bar. So just sitting, changing between those two chords, making sure they are consistent. And you can do that with any two chords. Say I take this E minor here to a C. It's a quite simple move, but I'm scouting shape bar, scout shape bar. Scout shape bar, scout shape bar. Let's take E minor to a G for instance, that's quite a distance, so this is where your hand to eye coordination comes in. We scout shape bar on the E minor, a scout shape bar on the G. Take your time, look at where you're going. Scout shape bar on the E minor again. Scout shape bar on the G again. Notice how the hand shape doesn't really change. Really, I'm just holding this shape here. Now, if you struggle with bar chords and you look at my hand here, you can see that actually in my hand, the shape, it's nothing too contortionist. So really, that's all you're doing to get these bar chords. It's all about how you put your thumb on as well. So you shouldn't be feeling like you're death gripping the guitar neck. It's more about making sure that you get these shapes. When you put the chord on, you should be able to take it off, move it out in place, and then go, all right, well, that's what it looks like, really. It looks like I'm holding a sandwich. guys. This is a cool thing to practice. If you want to do something like this in the E minor, which is going to put you in the realm of playing less bar chords, then what you're going to get is you're going to get an E minor and your G. Remember, scout shape bar. Take your time. E minor. There's the G. I know there's a B minor here. And there's also an A minor switch between A minor and B minor. And these are all common chord changes, guys. And I'll sit and do that for a few minutes. Scout, shape, bar. Scout, shape, no bar, just drum. Scout, shape, bar. Move to a G. Scout, shape, bar. What happens is, you end up losing this step-by-step -step process of scout shape bar. It becomes one whole blended movement. That's what I call it, a blended movement. And the whole thing moves in one smooth action. And that's how you get smooth bar chord changes. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you watch this one here because this joins onto this and it will help you to become better at your bar chords as well. Hey up guys, Ricky here with a quick message. If you didn't know, I have written a book. There's links for how to get to that in the video description below and I'll put a little card up here so that you can click on that if you want to support my work here on the channel.